today we're going to do a real life thing which is sewing in wig clips to one of my head covering orders. I'll also be hand sewing in snaps. I'm not going to speed this up or do cuts or anything so you're going to see the process from start to finish. It might be really boring to you and you might learn something. It just depends on where you are in your sewing. Um, I'm doing this as a voiceover. So I recorded this with trying to concentrate on what I was doing and talking afterwards to add the, uh, the audio in for you. I did this because at the time I made this video I didn't have a quiet background at all and right now I do. So first thing I'm doing is I'm finding center. That way my clips kind of have some balance as I put them in and not kind of lopsided as they get sewn in. I find my center point and next thing I need to do is obviously thread the needle. And you're going to find out as I go through this video, I struggle with threading the needle now. As I recorded this, I did not have my reading glasses on and I really, really should have because I just don't see nearly as well as what I used to without them, especially for doing something like this. And because this fabric was a lightweight chiffon type fabric, I wanted as small as needle as possible and that's where I'm like really right now in this video I was trying to find the smaller needle and I end up going with a little quilting between needle and this unfortunately have really tiny eyes and I, I make my attempt every time I think I made the attempt in this and I'm just like I know I should just use a threader I'm telling myself I need a threader why am I not using the threader but I'm stubborn and I still didn't use the threader um, until I fail and then I, I eventually I give up <laughs> and I go and get the threader and you get to see how I use that hopefully I have it angled in there where you can see good I have a couple types one of the types is actually the little cheap red one this one here is more expensive I think clover maybe it's dreads I don't know the theory is that little dark piece and might make it easier to see as you're trying to insert through the needle but I struggle with that one the cheaper one's a little easier but the problem is is it's still such a teeny tiny little eye on that needle that getting that wire through is just not easy but eventually I can get it poked through there once you poke it through then you put the thread in and then you pull the thread back through the eye and eventually see I kind of get it in there I practically murder this little threader trying to do it but I get it in there so I know that I go off the screen here in just a minute, certainly not intentionally. I do have a different, it's not really a tripod, but it's kind of a, a little stand with a boom arm on it that I'm using to film here. And I am kind of just getting used to that and kind of lining it up a little bit better. One of the things I struggled with was wanting to watch what I was doing normally and then watching through the cell phone screen and I had to kept stopping myself from watching the cell <laughs> but in the same turn then I would go out of frame so if I go out of frame here a bit off and on I apologize for that one eventually I kind of figure that out and I think line up a little bit better here I am trying to go ahead and loop around and tie off a knot at the end after fighting with a needle threader the first knot that I do is just your basic average knot. You literally take the two ends, put them together, loop them around your fingers, and tuck the tail inside the loop and then pull it tight. And then with that method you nearly always have an excess tail to trim, which is what I'm doing there. That is not the method I normally use to knot my threads trying to get the camera to focus but you can see there's a little teeny bit you do want to leave just a smidgen after the knot that way the knot doesn't come loose on you but that's probably the easiest method to learn to knot your threads it's not my favorite though there is a faster method and I do show you after I rethread the needle here in a bit right now I'm using my little seam gauge which is a sewing tool I think every seamstress needs to have I'm really not trying to be too crazy precise here. I'm simply trying to get a rough spacing. Basically, I'm measuring from center of the 
veil top and about two and a half inches out to the edge of the clip. And I just do that so the clips, clips are roughly evenly spaced. Um, I also put the clip up near the front edge of the veil. And I do that mainly because I can kind of hide the stitches a little bit easier in that lace than I can in the fabric of the veil, especially when it's a thin, thin fabric like chiffon. There are some fabrics you can stitch on the back side, and if you just barely catch the threads, your stitches probably won't show through hardly at all to the top side. And chiffon's not really one of them that you can do that too easy with, so I limited my stitches on the side of the clip that was over the chiffon just to barely put the tiniest ones that I could. I was showing the wax there. One of the things you can do is wax your thread to keep it from catching. Um, or not catching as badly. It's a little less likely to tangle. Which tangling is something you're about to see here if I can line that up right. Um, one of the problems in sewing wood clips is they have a tendency for the threads to tangle around the teeth of the comb. And you kind of are always having to bite that with ev or fight that with every stitch that you pull through. Those little threads will kind of want to loop around the comb. And if you get that stuck in there and you take another stitch, yeah, you're going to have to get your seam picker out and undo that. Um, but for the most part, if you watch with every stitch as your thread pulls tight, you can avoid it wrapping around those comb teeth. I try in this particular instance to put usually two to three stitches in every hole as I go across the top of those wood clips and I put the most where that lace is since I can hide my stitches just a little bit better into that lace and you know I'm doing two and three good stitches with deep bites into that lace and they're probably definitely showing through to the upper side if you look close. But even with them showing, they're not going to be blatantly obvious. It's one of the nice methods about using whip wig clips instead of um, like a bendy clip or a bobby pin is they're pretty hidden at a glance. You really don't notice they're even there. Um, when I first started encountering them, I didn't think, you know, people had any clips on at all. And honestly, I love the method because it keeps the veils from sliding. I have rather slick kind of hair, and those veils just want to slide back all day long without a wig clip. That little rubber piece in the clip really helps to keep it still. At least it does for me. Not everybody loves them, but I think most people who try them do like them. I have a pretty high selfie rate on people choosing them on my uh, Etsy store and whatnot. On my website, I'm still adding that as an upgrade option. Um, I'm doing it a little bit different. You don't have, on the drop down menu, you're not gonna have an exact ability to buy that with every veil. You just kinda have to add it as a separate item and an upgrade. But you guys will see once the site's done. I'm not too far from it being done, thankfully. But wig clips will always be an option for veils because I sew them into every veil I own Absolutely. Some styles of veils I even like to have four clips in instead of two. It just depends on the weight and balance of the veil. But that's the first one done. Hopefully you've seen the tie off as I knotted it off. I have taken to trying to knot off the thread and then bury the tail and then I trim a little bit away from the tail. Now I had enough thread left I could have gotten started on the next clip but if I don't think I can make it the entire way through the clip, I usually just put on a new thread. Here I did decide to go ahead and throw some wax on the thread just to kind of help stop the tangling. And to show you guys, since I knew I was filming, I figured I might as well show the extra little method. I don't often do that, but sometimes I get tired of fighting the thread. And here comes, yet again, the battle with threading the needle. Definitely was not my forte that night I was working. I really, really needed to get those glasses on. I think every time I go to thread with this veil, I have to get the threader out. The first time, I know you couldn't see it very well. I don't know if I'll catch it as well this time. <laughs> There's me getting the threader. Ugh, I didn't get it lined up. What's 
actually happening with that threader is you take the wire loop and you shove it through the eye of the needle before you do anything. Once it's all the way through the eye of the needle, you put your thread through the little wire loop and then you retract that out. You can see me putting it in there now. Okay, so the wire is through the eye. Now I put the thread through the wire and then I will pull the wire out and as it pulls through that eye, it will pull the thread with it. And it is tight, especially since I'm using needles here with smallish eyes to them. And now finally that thing is threaded. And I think I had to thread through the course of this veil a needle three times, maybe four, because I have to do the snap on the veil too. Not all of them have it, not everybody chooses it, but this particular veil they want a clips and a snap. So you have to sew both sides as a snap. Sometimes I have to thread a needle four times just to do this process. Okay, so I have my two tails. In this time, if memory serves, I did not choose to do the loop around. I know I look awkward at times with my needle and thread. It uh, tends to be kind of the arthritic nature of my fingers sometimes. It makes me a little bit fumbly and droppy and sometimes it's hard to get things lined up. I don't have a ton of arthritis, but most of what I tend to have seems to be in my finger joints and thumb joints. I'm not the most coordinated person anyway. But this is a quilter's knot I'm trying. You literally pinch the thread between your first finger and the needle and then you loop it around. I usually go three to four times. And then you have to pinch it tight like I am right there. And slide it down the needle and not let go. Notice I'm holding it very tight down the needle, down the thread, all the way to the end. Let your fingernail grab that knot and then let go. And you should, if you've done it right, end up with a knot that's a good firm knot. It's a thick knot and it'll be at the very end of your thread. That quilter's knot, when you learn to do it, is one of the fastest ways to make a good knot, especially after you practice it. And it makes just a knot that doesn't slip out quite so easily. I personally, once I learned how to do it, I pretty well adopted that knot and most of the time I use it. The only time I don't is like if I'm trying to show my daughter or something like that because it's a little intimidating at first. But I promise you, it's really not that hard. I did have to practice it for a good while before I got that down though. So don't be surprised if you find it difficult for a time, but keep practicing with it. I think I literally the first day I practiced it, spent like an hour sitting there just trying to learn that stupid knot. <laughs> but I'm glad that I did because I've used it for years and been really happy with it. Sometimes you just have to keep doing a thing till you develop a hand memory and you get it down. Coming through the next clip in the various holes, same kind of thing, just on the other side of center, just going through very lightly catching the sides of the clip and then sewing a little more deeper into the bite of the uh, lace there. I had the lace want to loop around one of the points. I'm sorry, the thread looped around the point of the lace. I'm saying it backwards. And I had to catch that and pull that away so it wouldn't distort the shape of the lace because I don't want that to happen. Probably a little minor thing that most people wouldn't notice, but it's the kind of thing that I would notice and it would drive me absolutely bonkers to leave it like that. So basically I just kind of, I must always, I don't know why, I sew halfway with the clip and then I tend to turn it around. I feel like the angle's better. Weird little habits one develops, but you do what you can for your right angles and so you can see. And after you sew enough of these things, you tend to have your habit. Recording this has made me realize that they take more time than I thought they did. I, I never feel like this takes very long in the grand scheme of things. I don't suppose it does. But when I was done with all of this, I was really surprised to see how long sewing clips and snaps into a veil takes. And I'm like, I probably am not charging properly for this, but for now it is what it is. But 
you sometimes you think that you know how long a thing takes and then you realize in reality no that's taken me longer than I knew but it is something I do find relatively pleasant as a kid I hated hand sewing but I find it a lot more enjoyable now it can be a little intimidating if you get multiple orders at once and they all happen to you know choose wig clips and snaps into their veils and you know and of course lately I've offered the upgrade for four of them there was one evening I had two orders each person ordered four veils and each person also chose four clips per veil and they had snaps and things to go in there too I was sewing all evening long on those <laughs> I'm like wow I've never had to do so many of them at once but sometimes that's when it rains when it rains it pours that was right around Christmas time so they were kind of Christmas orders but just about done with that I was burying the knot there I don't know how well y'all can see these things but hopefully the new um, phone stand I have can let you see better than in the past I know in the past my sewing videos yeah they were well intended but I know the visuals were pretty bad and even here still I think I have a good bit of room for improvement on being able to film more carefully I know someone's going to comment on my hands um, that they look dirty and whatnot I have a tendency because of my woodwork and various other things homeschooling and things I tend to play with paint a lot it's not uncommon for me to get my hands nailed with printer ink or any number of things so a lot of times I'll have a little stain or something on my hand so just ignore that um, but I'm sure someone will comment that's how the way of YouTube is they, they find out your vulnerabilities and they point them out <laughs> such is life right anyway snappies I'm going to do the sew in snaps sometimes I think I should just go ahead and go back to press in snaps some ways they were easier but the sew in snaps are nice too I think both have their benefits kind of the proverbial pro and cons of a thing I think uh, the little sew-in ones are probably a little more gentle on a fragile fabric like I'm working with here where the press on the kind that you have to either hammer in or use a pair of pliers they do a little bit better if you're dealing with a fabric that's a little bit tougher like a thicker cotton or something like that in this case I think the sew-on is a good choice sometimes just simple ties are easier on covering so too if you can just sew them down and be done with it they're more adjustable sometimes I like in my own covering snaps sometimes I prefer ties and sometimes I just like to do a little overlap in the back and clip it depends on the veil and the style in question and I don't always wear the same style but I do try to wear pretty comfortable styles I think the larger veils definitely do better with um, ties of some sort that way you can get them just the right level of snugness to kind of deal with the the weight of the veil but these little light ones especially these little football shapes just do really really well with snappies and yeah I, I was about to lose it over the threading not really I was finding it funny I was like really I am so blind as a bat sometimes I guess that's the cost of being 45 I have my glasses I even have the progressives now but I am just terrible not to wear the darn things bad habit I know if I had put those on I would have been able to see better but frankly those are small eyes on some of those needles I did choose to change my needle there a little bit ago and I chose one with a slightly bigger eye that was still a relatively skinny needle sometimes it's hard to get the right balance most of the time most of the fabrics and stuff that I use are pretty forgiving oh no I'm just now changing the needle sorry about that I'm going by memory here I had filmed this oh about a week week and a half ago and I'm just now finishing the voice over for this yeah I got tired of the needles so I tried to find one Usually one of the nicest ones for hand sewing are embroidery needles. They're usually not too big and they tend to have a bigger eye. They have it to accommodate that thicker embroidery thread. Um, it's a little bit big of a needle, 
I've got two brands there. Um, it's a little bit bigger of a needle, but that bigger eye is just a lifesaver. I didn't really want to use the bigger needle because of the chiffon fabric I was working with, but I was just like, you know what, I, I'm trying to fight, fighting with this. I also was fighting in an area that was just a little bit better reinforced on that corner with that overlapping lace, so I'm like, eh, it can handle it right here, so... This right here is the arthritic fingers talking. I find even getting those needles out of the package difficult. But that little pair of bent pliers can be a lifesaver. Because of my woodworking, I find tools that belong in the woodworking land to often be helpful in sewing land. And the reverse is hilariously true. Sometimes a sewing ruler is just what you need out in the woodworking. They help each other out. And as you may have seen in some of the intro photos I have done, I've been making thread racks. So one hobby is feeding the other hobby right now. <laughs> but it can definitely go both ways. I was thinking I can sew some pouches to protect some of the drill bits. So, you know, they can help each other out. This is a good thing. Again, I was doing the quilter's knot, doing the catch it between your finger, wrap it around three or four times, Pinch it to the needle, pull it down the thread, snug it tight with your fingernail, and you're good to go. And you usually won't even have to trim the end at all. Just a good fast knot. Not a catch in there, and I usually try to get that first good bite into the lace edge. I do think it's helpful and a little bit more solid to have lace edged veils, at least like these veils that aren't they don't have a facing on them or a heavier layer, that lace can really help reinforce it. Makes it just a little less flimsy along the edge, if you will. Of course, it depends on the individual veil and how it's made. Sometimes if you've done double turned hems, they'll have some strengths with that, but burying as many stitches as I can into the lace helps to make it just a bit stronger. I can caution you as you do sew in snaps, always make very sure that you're sewing them on the correct side. It's so easy to get that wrong. You need to kind of test your snap that one will go inside the other and that you have them in the right direction. I cannot tell you how many times I've sewed one face down or sewed one on the bottom instead of the top of the fabric and just kind of wanted to cry. You have to get your seam picker out and do your unpicking as they call it it is your best friend people often don't tell you when you're getting into sewing that sometimes you'll spend just as much time picking out stitches as what you put in <laughs> but it really is part of sewing you just kind of have to get used to it as a kid I always fought it but you kind of realize if you want to be remotely happy with the result of your sewing if you make a big mistake you better pick it out Otherwise, you'll just get dissatisfied and quit. Done that enough times, I reckon. There, I was, I was having a hard time with, I had looped around a couple times, and then the loop before last hadn't pulled tight. So that's why you see me just a pulling on that, trying to make sure that that loop went through. And I got it in there. Here, I'm about to knot off to finish that particular sat, snap. As I loop around, I always just kind of take and with my fingernail, I'll hold that knot down as it forms and I pull the loop through. I try to do it so I can get that knot as close as I can to the surface. I also tend to usually knot twice when I finish off. I don't know why, I just do. It just feels like insurance to make sure that that snap will stay on. I usually find with my own veils that sewing in clips and snaps Last pretty good. Um, it's been very rare I've had a problem with that. Once I think I had a clip break before the life of the veil was done, but most of the time the veil will end up stained or just plain worn out before the clips and the snaps die in any way. So that's usually a good thing and a blessing. Um, I get a pretty long life out of my veils. I have some veils that are several years old. Um, the big thing to me and my advice to you guys with your veils is just hand wash them. 
I know it's super tempting to toss them in the washer and they will probably go in and make it. But if you want a long life out of that veil, hand wash it. If you have a light colored veil like the one I'm sewing and it's starting to look yellow and stained, because frankly, that under the hairline area at the nape of the neck, that tends to stain. It'll get a little yellowed and whatnot over time. And the best thing for that is just soaking it in hot OxyClean. And it, OxyClean needs time to work. It's sodium percarbonate. But it does a really good job and it doesn't damage your veil at all. But a good hot long soak for it to do its thing does wonders for them things and just soak them in your bathroom sink overnight or whatever you want to do rinse them out and then hang them up to dry and your veil will last you a very long time most likely if you do get stubborn and put it in the washer anyway I cannot recommend strongly enough to either use a bag to like a garment bag to protect it and by all means please close the clips on those wig clips if you have those sewn in because they will catch other things and either rip the veil, rip off, or rip other things within your laundry. I don't recommend washing them veils that have whip clips in them at all. Have I done it? Yeah, I have. And I've had, most of the time it's been fine, but occasionally it's not. Occasionally it catches something and wants to embed it in another garment. And it's just not a good thing. I don't think it's worth risking it. Especially if you've had to pay me to make the veil for you. I mean, who wants to pay somebody to do a thing and then have it be ruined in the washer? So my recommendation is always just hand wash them, treat them gently, and they will last you a very long time. I'm getting pretty near finishing this off. We just have a little bit more stitches to do. But all in all, it's really not been a terrible thing. There I am burying the knot and clipping it off. Again, I know y'all, I could do better with the angles and being able to let you see. You see a bad habit there. I was starting to put it just in my thread. I am so bad to do that. They, they need to live on the little pink tomato I have. <laughs> but I'm sorry for the angle. I'm, I you know, hope that I can get better at filming and get it down right so you guys can see the overall process better. So... I resolve to continue try to improve in that if I can. As my grandma used to say, good Lord willing in the creek don't rise, we'll come back at it on another day and see if we can improve. But there is this fails done with its wig clips and its snaps for the day. I hope you guys have been able to learn something and you know, have a very blessed day.